Thank you for visiting Pass the Wire TV, the YouTube channel of PassTheWire.com. Saratoga today, day four, first Sunday of the meet, closing out the first week of the meet, brought to you by our friends at Am Wager and Zilla Racing Stables. Uh, we could not have been more wrong about the weather yesterday. Uh, looked like they were going to get a lot of rain. Turned out they got a little bit of rain. I don't think it really had that much impact on any of the races. Uh, we've got the same issue today. Rain is in the forecast. Maybe it'll avoid up there, maybe it won't. Looks like it's going to hit, but looks like it was going to hit yesterday. And that's, you know, one of the issues in talking about the races early in the morning, especially at Saratoga, is, you know, you don't know if and if how much the weather is going to play a factor later in the day. So you always got to keep that in mind. Races come off the turf, you get scratches, you get a sealed track. Yesterday we dodged it. Uh, today, who knows? You know, it's just... Uh, one of the things in this game that, you know, you got to deal with one of the, one of the intangibles. Uh, close, my, my biggest opinion of the meet so far was in the last race yesterday. Uh, Ducal, who won, uh, you know, got hammered in, 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 the, in the betting much more than I thought he was going to be. I mean, he was 7-2 on the morning line. There were a couple of shorter-priced horses on the morning line that could have gone off shorter than him. Uh, but they didn't, and there were two scratches in the race that didn't help the cause, and me being knocked out of the pick five uh, didn't help the cause on his on his win, win odds either because uh, I normally, normally uh, don't chase and don't push bets like that and, and, and live to fight another day when a horse uh, is shorter than I really, really want to take. But I was determined to make this week a winner, uh, so... I did something a little out of character and went after the horse anyway, and I'm sure that that didn't help uh, help the price. But he he won, he got home, and uh, that that that's what matters. So, uh, you know, today uh, decent card at the, at the spa, no question about it. Some interesting races, and you know the baby races are always are, are always interesting. You got a maiden special in the first, you got a maiden special in the fifth. Uh, you got one in, in, in the seventh, and I'm going to start there because uh, I'm going to talk about the late part of the card. Uh, and, uh, you know, those races are always exciting. You never know what you're going to see. Uh, before we get there, following C, didn't didn't run at all like I thought he would in the Haskell. Uh, very disappointing. 100% uh, wrong about him. I thought he would be on the lead much easier than he was coming out of those sprints. I thought he was going to really, really roll, and he didn't have any gas in the tank by the time they turned for home, and he looked like he was in trouble long before that, uh, when when Midnight Bourbon, who, who went down in the race, but uh, is okay, um, and, and they were just putting so much pressure on him early out of those sprints, I, I didn't like the way that was unfolding. I, I thought he would have been clear, and should have been clear, and he wasn't, so... Maybe he's a sprinter. Maybe he didn't like the track. I don't know. We'll see. But uh, my thoughts about him just going on a little bit of a of a, of a mid year tear as a three year old in, in against those kind of horses is probably not going to happen. As far as as what happened in the race, uh, you know, I thought what Flavian Pratt said after the race was interesting in that you know if he was able to freely use the the the, the crop he would he would have you know, you know, hit the horse left-handed and, and probably kept him from lugging in. I don't know. Uh, I think the stewards made the right call on the disqualification. Uh, the way I view it, it was clear that he came in and, and, and crossed over midnight bourbon. I don't think he was clear enough, obviously. Uh, 
and I think that had a, a major impact. Unfortunately, um, horse and rider are okay. Paco was pretty banged up, but he, you know, within an hour he he had said he's already gonna you know ride the next day. And you know, we just talked uh, about how tough these guys are. That's just another another example of it. Uh, all right, moving to the spa. Uh, in the seventh race, there's a really interesting horse. I, I, I suspect he's going to get pounded because everybody probably saw what, what, what I saw. And if you watch the replay, what you'll see. But equal pay, the one horse in that race, um, I read. And, and another thing that goes to how tough these guys are. Um, this horse was going to win last time out uh, when he kind of took a bad step, stumbled and went down. Uh, fortunately, he, he was okay. I read's okay. Uh, but... Guts to get right back on him and ride him back after the horse took a misstep and threw him to the dirt hard. Uh, you, you know, he was going to win. So I've got to think Chad bringing him back at, at Saratoga uh, has schooled him, worked with him, and that's not going to show any ill effect. And, you know, his mind is probably right after an incident like that because I always worry after a horse has an incident like that that the mind is not right. They're not focused on, 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 on what they're doing and you just don't know how it's going to unfold. Uh, but if he runs like he did his first time out, uh, I think he's going to be tough to handle, even from the rail. I'm not wild about maidens from the rail, but it is what it is, uh, you know. But he's going to really get hammered. And there were a couple of other horses in there. Uh, Pletcher's got a first-time start, a Mezcal that looked interesting. Big City Mama, Shug's horse making a second start uh, with Jose getting Lasix looked interesting. And the bottom horse coming in from... Uh, Gulfstream for for Ralph Nix, who does a, a, really, a really good job and, and, and is out of a really talented mare. Um, that mare was pretty fast and pretty talented and well thought of. Um, I think Catherine Sophia was her name, if some of you might remember her. It wasn't that long ago. Uh, it, it's also an interesting horse, but I, I would lean to to to, to the one of of what I saw in in that first race, and you know. The interesting thing is, you know, how I bet, I'm a one-way better. I go for scores, okay? I believe in cashing less tickets and winning more money. And if you read anything about how I bet on Pass the Wire or what my philosophy is, you'd understand that. So in a race like this where, you know, I, I, I lean to the one over those other, other, other three, uh, you know, in a pick four or pick five or pick six, I would only use the one. And how I would bet that race, if the one was a short price... Um, I would bet an exact a one with just one of those three horses, just cold. Like let's, let's just, you know, any one of the three, I don't know which one I would pick, you know, it would depend on what they're paying and, and how the track is playing and you, you know, what the board is, is, is telling me, but I would bet just one exact a one with one horse cold. I don't reverse. I don't box. Uh, you know, if the horse was a good enough price, I would bet to win also win any exacta, which would be my preference. But if he's short, um, I would just bet the cold exacta. Yeah, I will cash less tickets, but when I'm right and I hit, I will win more money. And at the end of a year or at the end of a meet, this is a marathon, not a sprint. Uh, it's, it takes a lot of discipline and, 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 and it goes against the human nature to want to cash as many tickets as possible so we box and we use a lot of horses and we fish and uh, chase and uh, cowboy ticket structure long run disasters uh you, you know when you hit and you make a count when you hit you erase all of the of, of those losses so i believe in cashing less but winning more and at the end of a meet or the end of the year that pays and that's just my approach it's not for everybody uh, you know, I always tell people, you do what works for you. If it's not broke, don't fix it. But if you're not beating the game and not coming out ahead, that's when you got to step back and think, hey, maybe there are things I can learn and or adjust to because we all keep learning and adjusting in horse racing. Uh, another horse that caught my eye today that I think is sitting on a big race is uh, in the eighth race, number six, Timely Tradition. Uh, I like Joel. Um, I think Raymond Handel does a, an excellent job. Uh, he also has some horses with uh, Zilla Racing Stables. Hopefully, we'll uh, see uh, see them uh, again soon. They still have the Bob at a meet uh, with with Smile Brian, but uh, this horse caught my eye. I I, I I like that he's moving in, 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 into this spot. I think it's a perfect spot. Uh, I, I think he's well drawn on the outside. I think pace wise and setup wise, he gets the right setup and the right trip. 
Uh, and I, 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 I think he's going to make a nice forward move and run, run a big race here. Um, the, 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 the last horse on the card caught my eye was in the last race, the 10th race. And, and, and it's an angle I've talked about a lot. And I would love this horse if this race was seven-eighths of a mile. Um, I like him anyway. And it's a maiden 20 race, so it's a, you know, anything can happen kind of spot. And who knows, you know, in those kind of races. Um, you know, there was a time in Saratoga where you hardly saw these races. Now, it's a longer meet. You know, it's the summer place to be. It used to be the August place to be. I think it was a 24-day meet, and I much preferred that. Uh, it was six days a week, um, four weeks, August, and it was just very, very high quality. There were nine races a day, and it was just all, all high quality. I mean, there were horses that didn't go up there and had to wait for other meets because they just didn't run a lot of claimers and didn't run a lot of low-level claimers. And it just just was a, a different type of meat, but uh, it's still Saratoga. We still love it, so you know, let's not dwell on the past too much. But those were some glorious times. Uh, you know, the horse that caught my eye, and, and it's an angle that I've talked about before. I mean, everybody's going to see the route to sprint angle, and uh, uh, you, you know, maiden special drop down into a maiden claiming angle, which we already talked about on one of the earlier shows, uh, but. I love horses coming off the Tampa dirt. It's 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 a great track to to leg up on. Uh, this horse ran a decent route race over there. Now cuts back in maiden twenty to six furlongs. Um, drawn outside with Santana, made a move in that race, which tells me he can probably run from close to the pace, off the pace, or you, you know do what he has to do. Six to one, I think, is a real fair morning line on him. He should be about that. Uh, kind of under the radar barn, uh, under the radar connections. You got some high profile connections in there with Theodoro, Linda Rice, Wesley Ward, Bill Mott, uh, even Robert Falcone. You know, they all got horses in there, all got shots. I mean, it's made in 20, anything could happen. But I like this horse coming in from Tampa. Uh, Going to get a little bit overlooked, I'm sure. And I like that. So, uh, I think that, that that's one that's definitely, you know, worth, worth looking at. So, all right, we got a short show today. It's Sunday. We have uh, full first week in the books. Uh, we had to use a short price to make it profitable with, with Ducal, but we got the money. That's what counts. Uh, and we'll, we'll keep rolling. Uh, tomorrow on Monday, there will be a show recapping. Um, it, it won't be Saratoga today. It'll be on Pastor Wyatt TV, recapping all the news of the week and talking about uh, different things like that if you want to tune in and catch it. If not, we'll be back the next race day with Saratoga today, day five. Ciao for now. Thank you to our friends at Amwager. Thank you to our friends at Zilla Racing Stables. And may you all uh, get out there, do well. Win some photos, have some fun, and enjoy the races. Ciao. Nobody does it better.